Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to do the rear tires on our van, which are the dual tires on the cab chassis. We're going to take you through a couple different points. Um, it's the same rims as the front, but two stuck together. Um, we're going to set some different key points here, focus more on cleaning the calipers and all the components. Uh, there's different components involved here as well as different bolt sizes, but we'll take you through all that in this video. So for this project, you're going to need a torque wrench and a breaker bar. A drive extension is highly recommended. You'll need a 19mm socket and a 24mm socket. A ratchet set is good to have. You'll need a screwdriver along with a bit set. A hammer might be useful to take apart some of the parts. You need a metal wire, wire brush, a nylon brush, and a toothbrush. A spray bottle with some soapy water and a microfiber cloth. Some wood to chalk off your wheels and to build the stand with some old newspaper as an underlier and the hydraulic jack of the sprinter along with the pipes that come with it. So for our sprinter, which is the cab chassis with the dual tires in the back. The jack point is where the suspension ties into the frame. So that's right here. That's where that spring goes back to the air suspension. If you have a normal van, then your suspension, your, your jack point will be right here on this side of the suspension where the suspension ties into the frame. Now I know this topic gets beaten into the ground but always be safe when working under the car when there's no tires on it. You always want to chalk off your wheels and make sure you use a jack stand. If you don't have one, use some firewood to put under the frame or put the spare tire under some part of the frame just to make sure if the seals on the hydraulic jack give out that it, the car doesn't come plummeting down on you. Now at the latest at this point you're going to realize the importance of the drive extension for the ratchet or breaker bar. We also use the last two sections of pipe from the hydraulic jack to give us a bit more leverage to slid it onto the end of the breaker bar. This job is really hard to do by yourself. Uh, you need a second person to help hold these wooden stands that we constructed uh, and put pressure onto the bolts so the socket doesn't slide off. And you're gonna wanna leave the handbrake tightened to make sure you don't put too much pressure onto the drive shaft for the engine. Loosen the two screws behind the caliper right here, the ones on the top. These might be difficult to break loose at first. Um, make sure you use your WD-40. The other one is back here. Use your ratchet to remove the wear sensor screw here. And then pull up on the caliper. And sometimes it doesn't come out completely, so you might need to put a screwdriver in between the disc and the caliper to pry it off. So just pry it up here. We go loose it is now again this one you can put closer to the ground but I wouldn't recommend putting it all the way on the ground because that brake line shouldn't be under too much pressure and then pop out your pads flathead screwdriver, pop loose the brake hardware, and then you gotta wiggle it out. <laughs> there you go. Do that for all 
four sides. So the next step is that you have to loosen the handbrake. Now you can remove the disc. Just slide it over. So to make sure that not all of this brake dust gets airborne, it's a good idea to spray down the whole caliper with some soapy water before you start using your metal wire brush to just brush this all off. So while we watch these amazing cleaning skills, we're going to talk a bit about the brake assembly on the rear axle of the Sprinter. There's a drum brake inside of the disc of the rear axle. This is only the parking brake, the handbrake. It doesn't get engaged while you're driving. You should check to see if there's any material left on the shoes, but these wear very, very slowly, so you should be fine. You don't need to change these very often. It's more important to clean out the assembly with some soapy water and a toothbrush. The toothbrush is to get into the hard to reach places. Also make sure to check the springs so they're not rusty or corroded. Since our discs were fine, we didn't have to change them, so we didn't have to adjust the shoes by turning the star wheel with a flathead screwdriver. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail. We're going to focus mainly on cleaning the whole assembly and making sure all the parts are working correctly. So in the future we'll do a video on changing the drums as well as the discs and the pads as well as bleeding the brakes. But for this video we're just going to stick to mainly taking the twin tires off, inspecting all the brake components and cleaning everything to ensure proper operation. Reinstall your brake hardware, make sure you've cleaned it and inspected it and make sure it's not broken anywhere. You just clip it back in to where it was before. So originally the plan was to spray paint these and make them look nice again, but since there's no rust and they actually look pretty good just cleaned off, we're just going to leave them. Next, you're going to use some copper anti-seize to make sure that your disc doesn't get stuck on this hub here. Give it a nice smooth little layer, doesn't have to be too thick. And then you can put your disc back on. And just slide it back over how you took it off. Make sure you're not to ruin the spray paint job. Alright, we got it. Line up the holes. And now you're ready to put the caliper back on. So it's probably always advisable to put some anti seize on your screws. Wedge your caliper back onto the disc and put the top screw in first. Always check your brake, brake line, make sure that it's not twisted. Don't stick your fingers in between them. Alright, now we're going to put the first screw back in. This always takes a bit of wiggling. Next, you're going to want to reattach your wear sensor.
then spray it down with some brake clean. Use your 24 millimeter socket and your torque wrench to torque down the back bolts. And the torque specs for the caliper adapter bolts are an 80 newton meters plus a 40 degree turn. During our brake inspection we found one broken piece of brake hardware and a stuck um, piston seal so it's really important to check the brakes every now and then and if you like this video feel free to give us a like subscribe or follow us on instagram at jp underscore adventures 19 stay tuned for more videos